go. Extra, extra small, high altitude. And Bupkis for wind. Actually, I had a bit of a crosswind. That's when you really have to feel what's going on. How do you learn to do a no-wind launch? Well, you don't learn by doing no-wind launches. <laughs> Interestingly enough, a no-wind launch is about mastering glider control and having that feel to feel exactly how much lift you have and exactly what the glider's doing at all times and being able to respond with small, tiny little corrections, giving the exact amount of break exactly when you need it because the slightest bit too much and you stall or spin the glider behind you. So to learn that takes hours and hours and hours of practice, glider control practice. But how do you learn glider control practice? If your glider's not in the sky, you can't. So you see these people pretending to be instructors out in Farmer Joe's field. And how the heck do you think you're going to get 25 to 60 hours of practice in Farmer Joe's field? You're not. It's not going to happen. It's a mathematical equation. It, it just simply takes uh, about 25 to 60 hours of actual practice to really master the glider control skills. Now, when you're doing a forward and running forwards, what that is, is forward kiting. So it's not about the two seconds it takes to get the glider up. It's about feeling and controlling that glider when forward kiting. So you go out to the beach, where you can kite for hours and hours. Literally, you can get upwards of 10 hours a day or more. It's, it's up to your physical ability. Where in Farmer Joe's field, you might get 15 minutes here, 30 minutes there. You know, a week later, you get 40 minutes and it just drags on for years. But you don't get that straight 25 to 60 hours like going to the beach. That's why you can't train people in Utah. You can't train in Tennessee. You can't train in Ohio or Idaho. It's not possible. It just does not physically work because it would take you over a year to try and get 25 to 60 hours of actual practice. But if you go to the beach, bam, we can knock out 25 to 60 hours of practice in five, six, seven days and still have time enough left for hundreds and hundreds of flights of experience. So that's how you learn to do no wind forwards in no wind. Because can you fly in no wind? No, you can't. It's impossible. Wings don't build lift in zero wind. So when you're running, you're making your own wind, which is the same as kiting in wind. So wind is wind is wind. Now, do you want to run for 25 to 60 hours to make your own wind? <laughs> it would take about 88,000 forward no wind launch attempts to build the same amount of hours that you can get in about six days on the beach of just doing glider control the right way. So that's, it's really not, it doesn't have to be confusing. You know, paramotor confusion. I hear all the time, oh, this guy says this and this guy says that. Well, double check it. Who's telling the truth? What's right? And then verify. If somebody says they're training in Ohio and they're the best instructor in the world, okay, let's see the skill of their students. I mean, how is that rocket science? You don't tell so much by what someone says as what you can verify that what they said is actually accurate very very important do they have actual skills to be able to fly or do they not have skills so if they say they're the top instructor and they literally can't even do what brand new super students can do uh there's a problem there 
or they say they're the best instructor in the world, but you can't find even one single video of any of their students or even them showing true and real skills, again, that's obviously a problem. If somebody says they're the best instructor, well, there better be a whole bunch of videos proving it where you can see the skill level of those they've trained. So make it really simple on yourself. <laughs> Looks like someone was dead there for a second. So paramotor confusion. There's no need for any confusion. You take it one piece at a time, just like anything else. Either somebody's saying something that's accurate or what they're saying is not accurate and not correct. Uh, so, same with gear. It's not about opinion. If you wanna look for what glider is the best, it's great if somebody says their glider's the best because that makes it really easy to disprove what they say. If they don't have all the best characteristics in that glider, then that glider is not the best. So it's nice when people say, oh, I'm the best, because it's really easy to disprove. Either they really are, which is easy to see, or they really aren't. So it makes it very simple. You take it one piece at a time. Now, the Dominator is the best. So why can I say that? Look up Paramotor World Speed Record. I set the Paramotor World Speed Record on the Dominator, 51 miles an hour. It's not opinion, it's a measurable speed. Whoa, check out the deer. So characteristics are measurable, unless you wanna whine about what color looks the best, then you can call it opinion. But just about all other characteristics are measurable. So how fast is it? You see these guys flying totally uncertified death trap gliders that are horrifically unsafe, and they claim, oh, this is faster. Really? Show me. If somebody says their glider's faster, you say, show me, prove it. Speed is a mile per hour. It is not an opinion. If you leave it to an opinion, you are a moron. <laughs> This is aviation. It is not something to be left to opinions and how you feel about something. This is something you need to research with facts, logic, reality, and rational thought process. Make it very, very simple. So speed is one characteristic. Very important because speed also dictates safety. What if the wind kicks up and you're stuck on the slowest dang glider out there? Yeah, you're gonna be going backwards. Next is efficiency, glide ratio. There's video of the Dominator in many, many side-by-side -side glide comparisons. One of the first things I do when I test gliders is I'll take and I'll fly them up with an equal weight pilot, like my nephew, who weighs about the same as I do, and we'll fly up about 1,500 feet, shut the engines off, and only one glider is gonna sink faster than the other one. There's no opinion. It's a simple one versus the other. One has a better sink rate, one's more efficient, one has a better glide rate. You can check these things. They are measurable. It is not an opinion. Glide ratio should not be left to the be opinion. If somebody's not checking these things, they're full of crap. If they say their glider's the best and they can't show you the characteristics as to why, then obviously they're lying or just a moron. So then you have things like stability. Which glider's more stable? Well, actually, let's get back to that efficiency. Look up Paramotor 4XS Dominator versus Nucleon. The Dominator's not just more efficient, it's literally humiliating and utterly destroying these other gliders. You can watch the 4XS, that's the extra, 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 extra small dominator, 16 square meters, side by side with the 29 square meter Nucleon. 
So the Dudek Nucleon, 29 square meters, that's almost double the size. Go side by side, shut off the motors, boom. Dominator out glides the Nucleon, half the size, 16 square meter versus 29 square meters. And the Dominator still wins. That's not just a win, that's utter humiliations galore. It's just utter destruction. And even if the Dominator tied the Nucleon, the Dominator would still win because it's the safer glider. It's a certified beginner class glider, while the Nucleon is so unsafe, even the guy who tried to do the safety tests died. His name was Wolfgang, and he literally died just trying to do basic safety tests on the Nucleon. It's, I mean, it's like this information, it's not about opinion. It's about measured, measurable characteristics. So not only is the Dominator more efficient than other wings, it's a lot more. Look at the side-by-side -side comparisons and just watch a glide comparison, like the APCO lift, versus the Dominator. Side by side, bam! Even the extra, extra small Dominator destroys the lift of the gliders nearly double its size. So measurable characteristic. Next one, you want to measure stability. Which glider is more likely to collapse? Again, it's not an opinion. This is very easily measurable. If you want to know which of two wings is more stable. It's kind of like scratching a piece of glass with a diamond. You just take the two wings and you run them into each other. If you take two gliders and you run them into each other, the one that collapses first is less stable. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's very simple, rational ways to discover, you know, characteristics and see which one is actually better instead of listening to loads of crap and people go, oh, mine's better, mine's better, blah, blah, blah. Has nothing to do with opinion. These are measurable things. Then safety. Dominator's the safest. Look at the collapse testing. Even compare the Dominator to other certified gliders. I mean, the Dominator is being compared to totally uncertified class gliders because it has the best performance in the world. So people are comparing it to their competition wings. But why the freak would you call something a competition wing when it's getting its butt kicked by the safest glider on the market? Kind of stupid, but yeah. So anyway, you compare the Dominator to one of the safest class of gliders. Again, look it up on video. Paramotor Dominator versus Mac Para Muse. You can watch two real-world in-flight collapses. These were not induced collapses. These were real-world scenarios. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you watch that Mac Para Muse. Guy takes a uh, collapse, and it takes the glider approximately nine seconds to recover. And... It doesn't just recover, it actually takes a secondary collapse. So it collapses and it surges so violently trying to recover, it actually collapses for a second time uh, and takes about nine seconds on that video before it actually pops out and recovers. Then you watch the Dominator in a real world scenario take a much bigger collapse, massive collapse, even bigger, and whap, the Dominator's open in less than one second. And it doesn't lose hardly any altitude at all, other than he lost about 20 feet because he let off the throttle, but literally doesn't lose altitude. And that's from a massive, a bigger collapse. And where the Mac Paramuse spirals towards the ground and takes a secondary collapse. These things are measurable, they're comparable. Look at the collapse testing. Look at how the glider responds and actually look at those characteristics. This sport should not be about opinion. Anyone leaving aviation and an aircraft up to somebody's opinion is a moron who does not belong in aviation. If you're taking people's opinions for something your life depends on, 
there's a problem there unless you have a whole lot of developed trust in that person. Makes a big difference. But more important to actually... should not be any confusion when you're shopping around which gear is better. Okay, let's talk about paramotors. It's not about opinion. Throw out opinion and start looking at actual characteristics. Does the paramotor have good protection from the prop or does it not? It either does or it doesn't. You take the flat top, boom, it's got the best protection from the prop. Why? Not because I said so, not because of opinion, but because you can see me jump up and down in the dang netting and it doesn't flex into the prop. It's a measurable characteristic. Look at any other paramotor. And if you want to test it, put one hand on the prop, one hand on the netting, and see how much actual force it takes to push the two together. Most units out there take as little as two to three pounds of pressure to flex the cage or netting back into the propeller. That means you hit one weed. You hit a weed and the cage flexes back into the prop and the whole thing explodes. Huge, huge issue. You trip and fall down, you put your hands out to catch yourself, bam, the prop hits your hands above your head. So something like protection from the prop is pretty obvious. You don't even have to be a pilot to know that you don't really want to get yourself shredded in the prop. That's probably a bad thing. Unless somebody's sales pitch is, oh, it's more fun to chop your hands off. But whatever. <laughs> Most of these ignorant people that bash trash and lie will not even put up an actual, you know, rational argument or try and state anything because they're so ignorant they just they can't refute the facts. So you just gotta take the pieces one at a time. Protection from the prop. Next, something like crumple zone. I mean, again, it's mandated in cars because obviously it's extremely effective. You want something to absorb that impact away from your body. Flat top has up to 18 inches of crumple zone that's extremely well designed where it actually extends out under the pilot where other units literally have none. If they have floppy bars that go up and down, the harness can just flop right into the ground. There's nothing, absolutely no resistance keeping the pilot's body from hitting the ground. Then you got things like face plant protection. What happens if you trip and fall down? I mean, you're running around with weight on your back. Anyone who's gonna claim that they don't fall down? I mean, seriously, really? Are you gonna believe that? Yes. If you're running around as fast as you can go with weight on your back, you're gonna trip and fall down from time to time. It happens, even for experts. You know, you trip on a rock, you twist your ankle, crap can happen, you trip and fall down. If you don't have bars sticking out in front of you to catch the weight of the unit and all that thrust it's producing, what's gonna happen? It's gonna smash your face right into the ground so hard, one guy's now quadriplegic because he snapped his neck it smashed him in face first so hard. And there have been many, many injuries. So protection, you know, face plant protection, protection from the prop, protection from getting smashed into the ground. These are just obvious logical things. Things that are measurable, things that make sense, that are rational. It's not a bad opinion. You wanna throw opinion completely out of it and start looking at rational things. Things like torque compensation. If somebody says they have, oh, we've got torque compensation and this and that and the other thing. Well, just watch a video of them take off. If they're torquing clear off to the side, then no matter what torque compensation they claim to have, it's not working. So let's see, flat top, boom. Full throttle, climb out. No hands. Where, where am I going? Turn right, turn left. See 
zero torque. Turn right, left. Let's go right, and let's go left. Yep, boom. Zero torque. You can just eliminate all torque from the flat top. It's very, very simple because you have the widest stability fixed hook end point. So it's obvious and logical why the flat top has no torque or you can eliminate all torque very, very easily. But look at other units. You watch them take off and they're torquing clear off to the side. And so, you know, again, don't just believe opinion or BS or fall for total bull crap. Just verify it. If somebody says they have torque compensation, well, watch their unit. You know, somebody launch with their unit, then watch somebody launch a flat top. Which one takes off more level? That's torque compensation or a lack of torque steer. So very, very simple. Then you got things like power. Again, look at what is possible on those units. You know, I mean, I'm setting all sorts of world records on the flat top, so obviously you have the best power to weight ratio. That seems logical. If you set the world speed record, you obviously have the most power. If you're setting tandem world records, you have the most power. If you're setting altitude records on paramotor trikes, well, obviously the power is there. So it, instead of, you know, being confused by simplistic things, just verify, take it one piece at a time. Look at things. If somebody says they're the best instructor, blah, 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 well, how well did they train their students? So the sport really does not have to be confusing if you look at it logically and rationally and throw out opinion and BS and try and determine who is actually sharing accurate, rational, provable information that they back up with video versus people that are just, you know, talking crap or saying they're the best, but have absolutely no way to back it up. So huge, gigantic differences in the sport. You wanna have some fun, you wanna learn true and real skills, but how are you gonna learn true and real skills from people who don't have them themselves, and you can't find even one single person they've ever trained to have skill. That, this is a major, major issue. There is no license in the sport. So verifying the skill of who you're training with is absolutely critical. I mean, I'm pretty simple. Just look up world's best paramotor pilot, every video's of me. And what more than that is I'm doing things that other people can't do. Because again, think about it logically. Just because every video is of me, does that mean I'm the best? No, the best pilot is the one who has capability others do not have. That makes sense, that's logical. Just because you have more videos doesn't mean you're the best, just because your videos come up number one. But if every video is of you when you search for world's best paramotor pilot and you're seeing things done, that other pilots just cannot do, then okay, it seems logical and rational that that person has more skill than other people. So verify it. But it's very, very important you look at the skill level of who you're talking to before you go taking advice from people. And even if you find someone incredibly skilled, such as me, thank you very much, but if you find somebody skilled, still verify and double check that what they're saying is true and logical and rational. So there's no reason to get totally scammed by Kirk Fister or Aviator PPG or Black Hawk or Fly Products or Nirvana or all these other scams. There's, there's no reason for it. Now, I just called Blackhawk a scam. Again, that's a good thing because if somebody makes a big statement like that, now it's easy to verify that what I said is either true or it's false. So why are those like Kurt Fister and Blackhawk and Aviator PPG, why are these people total scammers? Well, a scam is 
you know, not giving people what they actually pay for. So these people are acting as instructors, but they're not training anybody. I challenge you, try and find even one single video of any of these people. Kurt Pfister says he's the top US instructor. Try and find even one video of him doing something as simple as just reverse kiting with no hands, like you can see all super students doing before they actually fly. So look at that skill level. You got a guy pretending to be an instructor who literally can't even do what our brand new students can do. Then look and try and find any video, literally even one person that he's ever trained showing true and real skills like kiting up a vertical wall, for example, demonstrating real mastery of glider control, or just flying and demonstrating really mastery of flying. Where's any video of a Kurt Fister or Blackhawk student getting 530 flights of experience in one class? It doesn't exist. Super training is the best, but that's not enough because it's not enough to tell a kid no. You know, sometimes you have to actually pull them away from a hot stove. You can't just tell a kid, you know, hey, these pancakes are great. You also have to tell him, hey, don't touch the stove. That's really hot, it will burn you. So as the expert, I am telling you, do not even think of trying to train with these people because they are not competent and they will burn you because you will not develop true and real skill. You're not gonna learn skills from those who are not teaching them. It just does not work that way. So the scam is they're offering to train people when they themselves don't have even the most basic skills and they have never trained even one person to have true and real skills. So again, it's not opinion. Oh yeah, he's a scam, blah, blah, blah. It's not about that. Verify why it's a scam. You know, if somebody calls somebody else a scam, well, that's good because that's a big statement. Either what they're saying is gonna be true or it's gonna be false. And if there's a scam out there, like people like Kurt Fister pretending to be an instructor when he literally is chucking people in the air without any skill at all, well, that's a scam you definitely want to know of. You know, it's a commandment to warn thy neighbor of pitfalls that lay before them. So that would be the honest, decent, moral thing to do would be to warn other people of major, major issues. If it was just Ford versus Chevy, it'd be very simple. If there were other great instructors, I would just beat their price. Or I would say, hey, you know, go to them if you're closer to them. Come to me. That'd be great if I could say, yeah, in that area, go to this guy, and in that area, go to that guy. But no, instead, I have to warn people about the actual truth because their training is so incompetent and so bad, it is, it's unbelievably shocking. I mean, you would be, you're not gonna become a pilot by getting chucked in the sky with no training at all. That is not how you develop real skill. That is a complete nightmare. That's how you get 20 people killed in a single year. It's just total carnage and death. That on top of pushing just horrible, horrible gear, totally uncertified gliders and paramotors that haven't had a safety update ever. In 40 years, people have been chopping their hands off the prop and they still haven't fixed the issue. Versus, you know, the flat top that addresses every well-known issue in the sport. You can watch the whole video series of very specifically 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. So again, keep away from opinion and BS and verify what is being said is actually true. Look for the facts. Look for the videos and evidence to back up what people are saying. Look at the skill level. Make sure that they know what the heck they're doing and that they have a track record of teaching other people to know what the heck they're doing. Very, very important. Let's have some fun.
we go. Down we go. The Dominator just handles like a dream. Oh yeah. This thing freaking rules. Plus, the super safe ladder. Look at this. Boom. Yank it collapse. Who gives a crap? Watch this, I'll pull a full frontal here. Boom! Full collapse, bam, pops right back out. And this is an extra, extra small. This is a small one. And it just responds, piece of cake, whoop de doo doesn't care. I mean, look at this. Here we go. Let's do it. Now, I'm what? 40 foot, 50 foot off the ground? Bam! Yank it collapse. How did I know that wasn't gonna pound me into the ground? Bam, yank it collapse. And I'm 40 foot off the ground here. Yank it collapse, boom, yank it collapse. It's, this is the Dominator. We trust this glider with our life. I trust my kids' lives with this glider. If somebody's too scared to go out and collapse their glider and run it through all the collapse testing, you definitely don't want a glider that they're too scared to collapse. So kind of important that somebody is confident and is tested and knows what the freak they're talking about. If they tell you it's a safe glider, they better be able to show you where they've proven that to themselves and fully tested that. So measurable characteristics. If I say it's the safest, but I don't back it up at all, then forget it. That's worthless. Talk is cheap. If it's the safest glider, I should be able to prove it. If it handles freaking awesome, then I should be able to prove it by diving over stuff and having a blast. Woohoo! How's that for handling and fun factor? through my wake. That's just seriously fun. Oodle it. All right, how do we check which way the wind is blowing? Let's fly in a circle here. We're gonna do a nice consistent circle and try and see which way we're going the fastest. Well, I'm going faster. Let's see, which way do I go the fastest? And which way do I go the slowest is what I want to know, because that's the way that I land. Or does it not make any difference? Okay, this is definitely the slowest right here. So there's a little bit of wind coming from this direction. So that's the direction that I land in. come in and all of a sudden you accelerate, <laughs> there's a problem there. Something's not quite right. I'm going slower this way. Let's try the other direction. And whoa, I'm going slow this way. This is the way I took off. And that's plenty slow. I land this direction. Let's see if this way works. <laughs> Almost the opposite way. Oh, I'm accelerating, but that's slow enough, so let's land it anyway. Slide it in, because every stop should be a slide to landing, and boom, set her on the road. Paramotoring! Well, this has been a good lesson on how not to be confused and how not to fall for bullcrap. Just verify what people say. This is the coolest sport, coolest thing you will ever do in your lifetime, but only if you get the right gear and training. And the right gear 
is the gear that has the best characteristics. <laughs> it's not about opinion. Oh, my gear's the best. It's about which gear has the best characteristics, which gear is the lightest and has the most power and the best safety, best durability, and the best reliability, and which glider gives you, you know, the best glide ratio, the best sink rate, the best handling, the best efficiency, excuse me, best speed, uh, best stability, collapse resistant, and safety, and ease of launch all in one glider. So you just take the characteristics one at a time. Forget opinions and stick to the characteristics and you'll find out that Superdell is telling you the straight up truth. <laughs> and if I'm not, I challenge you. I challenge you to try and find any error in what I'm saying. You know, let's talk about it. Discuss it rationally. There's people who just talk trash. And then there's people who really do want to help you and discuss things intelligently like rational, decent, kind human beings that actually care about your life. So let's go flying. Call me. Let's go.